um, after the not so fun part, <laughs> but the necessary part of rehabilitating rehabilitating the home, that people will get involved and um, and help us figure out what to do with it next and activate it in a really creative way. Um, it's also right across the street from um, the church, the A and E church, where her mother preached, which is still an active church, which, which is amazing. So we're really excited to um, be a part of this process and um, to do our part to make sure that Nina Simone's home um, becomes the place that um, that it it should be. Definitely. Um, and for folks that are listening from outside of the area, like I said, we've got the Silver Nightingale who's out of Florida, and we've got uh, Jenny who's out of Asheville. So some of them may not be able to make it to a rally on this weekend. Like I said, I've got a schedule conflict with something that's hate time. But for those that are interested in helping in this effort, wishing that they were able to hear Lisa Simone but can't make it to the event, do you have any uh, ways that they can help with this cause? Because it sounds like a wonderful cause that people even on the national level need to be aware of and that they might be able to help in one way or another. Absolutely. So um, anyone who's not here is still welcome to buy a ticket. <laughs> Again, a the forty-five or thirty-five dollar contribution is going directly towards the home. So that's a small way. Um, and those tickets are available at ncartmuseum.org. Again, that is ncartmuseum.org. Um, if that is not a good fit, somebody feels. You can go to the National Trust for Historic Preservation's website, which is savingplaces.org. Again, that is savingplaces.org. And there is a link on that website where people can contribute directly um, to the home via a crowdfunding campaign. So, again, either through um, a ticket from the North Carolina Museum of Art for this concert or uh, this crowdfunding campaign on savingplaces.org. Folks can contribute either way. Um, and Carly and I would really love for you to contribute via that concert. <laughs> yes, we, we, they've um, raised about $25 million. I'm sorry, just kidding, $25,000. <laughs> um, but they want to raise $50,000, big difference. <laughs> um, and they want to raise um, $50,000. So we're hoping to close that gap. Um, at the end of this weekend. And we actually have some other events in the Nina Simone weekend I'd love for, uh, we'd love to, for you all to know about. For the musicians that are listening and the music educators that are, that are listening, there are some master classes that Lenora Helm is actually um, going to be taking the lead on on Saturday. And that information can be found at the ncartmuseum.org as well. Um, that will be at 10.30 a.m. on Saturday and at 2 p.m. on Saturday. And then we also have an, a conversation with Lisa Simone on Sunday, August 18th at 3 p.m., which is currently sold out for adults. Sorry, adults. <laughs> but um, she's, this was her idea. She really wanted to give back to the youth. And so any college students listening any aspiring musicians listening that are that are young and, and just getting out in, into their careers, she really wanted to have a talk with the youth. And so um, those, those – is that free? Yeah, that's free for students, but you do need to register. And that's also at ncartmuseum.org uh, as well. That all sounds amazing. And um – I'm going to let our local jazz DJ who's on our local NPR station know about that because she's a huge fan of Nina Simone and plays her music frequently. So I don't know, maybe that's Wonderful. something she might be able to announce, um, you know, even though we're not in the area, but she could at least announce the campaign. Thank you. We love, uh, we, we, just, we need the, the word to be spread like wildfire because, Mm -hmm. um, we know how much Nina Simone means to so many people, and yeah. um, just, you know this is this is such a special special event involving her daughter, and just, we just want to be able to give her a warm North Carolina welcome with a full crowd. We do. <laughs> Again, she's she's coming all the way from Paris to do this. This is her contribution to to um, preserving her, her mother's literal physical legacy in terms of that, that birthplace. So um, that would be wonderful. Thank you. Sounds amazing. And, uh, I wish I could be there. <laughs> <laughs> I 
was yeah. going to say, Laura Sue, have you ever been inspired by any of Nina's songs yourself? Because, like I said, when I think of uh, activism, people that are put their music with their activism, Nina Simone was definitely one of those. Boy, I have to think about that. I mean, I, <clears throat> I've been listening to her for, you know, ever, but I, I don't know if I really have ever played any of her songs. I don't remember doing that. Yeah, I would say, you know, this is Carly, I, I would say, you know, Mark, you mentioned, you know, I, I always use the term artivism, um, you know, using your art for, for activism, for social change. Uh-huh. And, you know, Lisa, I mean, Anina gave, really sacrificed so much um, and, and eventually moved out of the country because of how much she spoke out for her people. Uh-huh. Um, and I guess throughout this whole process of, um, Angela and I um, planning this event, I've always had the theme song of Young, Gifted, and Black in the back of my head. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, yeah, um, that's great. Yeah, it was uh-huh. such a hopeful song, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. And I'll say for myself, um, Mississippi Goddamn is one of her most well-known songs, particularly as uh, a very vocal and bold civil rights anthem. Um, and that song actually took on new meaning for me recently. I spent most of last week in Jackson, Mississippi, and actually all day Saturday um, engaged in connecting with uh, civil rights sites in Jackson, Mississippi, and in parts of the Mississippi Delta, including Medgar Evers' home, um, the grocery uh-huh. store where Emmett Till walked in and allegedly whistled at Carolyn Bryant, the courthouse where the Emmett Till case was tried and that song took on new meaning for me last week after getting to literally walk in some of those spaces where um, our ancestors walked and their lives were sacrificed Um, I that song has always touched me um, but but last week I said you know what I got it I got it and again as Carly said this is a woman who sacrificed her career to um, call out the injustices that were happening across the country in a really um, tumultuous era um, in our time, an era that is is somewhat resounding even now. Mm-hmm. I'll yeah, tell you, that, think, that song I... has been on, I think, a lot of people's minds is after the the raids on, you know, the factories yeah. in Mississippi. Mm-hmm. Like, I know I thought yeah. of that song, and I saw other people commenting, you know, on posts, Mississippi, goddamn. I mean, it was just, that was just in people's heads, that song. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, Jenny, if you're still on the line, the uh, yoga lady, has uh, any of the uh, Nina songs inspired you at, at all, or are you that familiar with Nina's music? I know that you're a yoga lady, but even the younger activists are familiar with some of her music as well. Yeah, I am familiar with her music, um, and I do like a lot of soulful music and music that would be inspired from what she's created. So we definitely like to have a lot of um, wide range of variety of music, but a lot of it is, you know, either conscious hip hop or soul music. And I know that anything that was created like that in today's world was, you know, uh, inspired by her and others that came before Definitely. Yeah. And, uh, Mark, oh, go ahead, sorry. Carly. I was going to say, because you actually use even some of your theater in some of your activism, because I've known you for a number of years, and I know that you actually incorporate some activism, not just in your work at the uh, through the state, but also in some of your theater pieces. Uh, yes. I, I, um, I love being able to, um, to, to work on projects that, um, can change people's hearts. I truly believe that art, music, um, theater is a very effective tool. It's not just fluff. You know, I think oftentimes we think of the arts as entertainment, but it truly can be used as a very powerful tool to affect change. Um, and, uh, you know, Nina Simone actually has a really powerful quote that I've always lived by even before working on this Um and it's uh, an artist's duty to reflect the time. And um, she truly lives by that, that, that artists are powerful human beings. I think so many times that we are told that, you know, we're, 
that what we're doing, you know, won't make any money and we're just playing and, and people don't take us seriously. But really, we're some of the most powerful people on earth because we have a very special gift that we can utilize to, to use to, to speak out about the wrongs of this world and to give a voice to those who are unheard. And um, I think that Nina definitely believes in that. You can see it throughout all of her music. Um, Four Women is another piece that really sticks out in my mind um, because Four Women was, you know, truly told the story of black women and, and all of the stories of black women, the variety of stories of black women and the hardships um, that we've endured throughout the years. Um, and so, yeah, I, I have a very soft place in my heart for Nina Simone. And that, I think that's probably why um, Angela and I both have poured into this so much. Angela and I both, um, a little fact about Angela, I'm going to tell on her a little bit. <laughs> She's, uh, you know, Mark, you know, I'm a classically trained um, vocalist, um, and um, Angela here is a classically cha- trained pianist. Um, we and we like a, Nina we Simone. a trio. <laughs> yes, we could have. And so a lot of people don't know, like, Nina Simone actually was classically trained. That was her original dream was to be this famous worldwide, um, you know, t- touring classical pianist but because of the color of her skin she couldn't get into Curtis Institute in Philadelphia um, even though she started out at Juilliard and she and and she ended up singing in these in the and these clubs and that's when she changed her name to Nina Simone because she didn't want her mama this preacher to know she was singing you know the world's music right so she changed her name to Nina Simone from Eunice Wayman and um, but but you can hear when you listen to her music, you can hear that classical training in her piano. And, um, and that I think is the other reason why she sticks out as an artist. Oh yeah, definitely. And, uh, um, Dean, I think we got to get Irving in so he can talk about the play that he's doing about homelessness and everything. But I think that we may yep. have a musical group here. We may have a musical group that we've created here. So we're going to have yeah, to get really? the Silver Nightingale along with Angela <laughs> and Carla. I mean, I know that she's all the way down in Florida. And Carla and uh, Angela are in the Raleigh area, but that's okay. There's you no know, air, airports work both ways. So we'll have to get them to create this new form and this new group of the classically trained trio that we put together here on uh, Straight Talk with Dean Mark. <laughs> Seriously, right. I, I'm on board with that, 100%. Thank you again, right. and you can find out those details on ncartmuseum.org, yeah. uh, celebrating Nina Simone, featuring Lisa Simone in concert, Saturday, August 17th, 8 o'clock p.m. Thank you. Yep, and don't get off the line, because right. I, like I would like you all to hear Lisa, because I'm going to try to get a, the dating song on, which is one of... Uh, the Silver Nightingale songs before we get off. But before we get off, I definitely want to hear from Urban Truitt, who is also about trying to use theater and the art to make issues known. Of course, he's definitely told some stories, it was like the African folk tales, where he's retold some of the classic folk tales. I remember when he did one on Cinderella that I believe I was involved with some time back and everything. And now he's got a play that he's done a couple of times, but I believe this is the one that he's doing at the Art Center that focuses around the issue of homelessness. So, Urban, are you there? Yes. How you doing, Mark? I am doing good. So we've been talking to folks that are all about using the art as part of their activism, and I definitely know that you are one that is a big fan of theater, but you're not afraid to talk about issues using the theater or using film, because you've actually talked about issues around film as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like um, I just said before, it's a great platform to bring awareness. And the show that we're doing is Going Homeless. And it talks about several issues, domestic violence, drug abuse, and homelessness. And what brought you to those issues? What made you decide you wanted to do this play? Because I know that this has also been, if I remember correctly, it was partially a movie as well. But what got you into interested in those issues in terms of being a theme that you were interested in making this a uh, play about originally? Well, in the black community, these issues are somewhat taboo, and a lot of people don't want to talk about it. They kind of like sweep it under the rug. And we, these are some issues that we really need to address for the healing of our community. So that's why 
want to tackle these issues and bring it to the forefront and bring awareness. And not only do we bring awareness,